Carlos, thank you for joining us for this special service that we're having. Your First Baptist Church, we've never done a service like this. This is known as our Good Friday service. Now, why are we doing it at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? Well, the Bible tells us that Christ was nailed to the cross, 9 a.m., and then it was three hours, six hours later that he passed away, that he died. So we are doing as best we can to observe and remembering the death of Christ on the cross. Thank you for joining us. If you can, we're going to uh, maybe invite some folks, text them real quickly and say, come join us for this special time. We're going to have a prayer, and then Tyler's going to lead some, some singing, and then we're going to have just some short devotional thoughts about what it meant for Christ to bear our sins on the cross. Join me in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your giving your son to die on the cross for our sins. We can spend the rest of our lives singing your praise and all of eternity giving glory to you and it wouldn't be enough for what you have given. Thank you, Jesus, for going to the cross. How I pray that our words and our thoughts could just do something to glorify you and could also be used to reach someone with the gospel message of salvation. We love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you again for it. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sing together, I hear the Savior say, I hear the Savior say, of Good Friday, and we can't cover all of it in this little bit of time, but God has laid different things on our hearts that we wanted to share with you about. And for me, I wanted to share with you guys about the darkness that happened on uh, Good Friday, the darkness that happened on that Friday leading up to his death while he was still hanging on the cross. And so I'll be reading for us Matthew 27, verses 45 and 46, and it says, From noon until three in the afternoon, Darkness came over the whole land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me or forsaken me? 
I think there's two darknesses that we see right here. The first one in verse uh, 45 is the physical darkness. And there's a darkness that went for three hours in the middle of the day from noon until three, which is typically the, the brightest time of the day, the time that you're going to get the most sunshine. And there's been skeptics that try to say, well, it, was, uh, it might have been a storm that happened or it might have been a solar eclipse. Well, we had a partial solar eclipse a year or so ago, and it didn't do much of anything here in Covington. Mm -hmm. And I know there are some places that had total, close to total darkness. It was just for a few minutes. Right. This happened for three whole hours. So it was something different than just a solar eclipse. It was something supernatural that happened. And I, I strongly believe that it was God showing his judgment for the land, for the sin mm -hmm. that people had committed. You know, we commit sin in darkness. We try to hide our sin. We, we might go somewhere to sin, or we try to keep it all to ourselves. Don't let anybody else see us when we commit a sin. While we're in darkness when we sin, Jesus was in darkness when he hung on that cross. He had to bear that sin. And so not only was there that physical darkness, but then there was that also that spiritual darkness right there where Jesus cried out. It's in the original language right there with the lie, lie, lama sabachthani, but my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why had, why had God forsaken Jesus Christ? And, and Jesus had been in perfect communion with God from the very beginning, from eternity past up to this point. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it was broken because he had all of that sin placed on him. All the sin from the past, from Genesis, Genesis 1, all the way up to Revelation, up to present day. And I believe strongly believe future sins too because all of our sins were future sins when Jesus died on that cross. Mm -hmm. And that one death covered all of our sins. And if you could just put your sins in one day in a jar, we couldn't be able to contain it in that jar. Just how much in a lifetime of billions of people were placed on Jesus at that time. You know, Jesus went through physical sufferings of getting beaten, put on that cross where he couldn't even, was disfigured where he couldn't even visibly tell who he was. Yet I think this separation from God was the worst part of the entire mm -hmm. crucifixion that he had. He had that spiritual darkness. And one last thing I want to mention with this, uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I think Jesus was also calling out Psalm chapter 22. If you have time later, go back and read it. This is talking about Jesus' death on the cross. And there's a lot of um, metaphors about what he went through. And at the very end of chapter 22, it shows that he has the victory because it is showing him in a future time. You know, while we have this darkness right here, and Brother Chuck and Cliff about to talk on the death of Christ, we do know that we have a positive and a bright future looking for us after this Good Friday. Well, Matt, you're exactly right about prophecy being fulfilled, and it's it's really amazing when you look at Scripture and the death of Christ. His life, his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, all is pictured in the Old Testament leading to the New Testament. Hundreds of prophecies are fulfilled but especially when he died upon the cross. You mentioned Psalm 22. Like, like Matt said, please go home and read. I mean, you're at home afterwards. Read Psalm 22, and you're going to be amazed at how that it pictures the crucifixion of Christ. Another part that in the Old Testament that pictures the crucifixion of Christ is the Passover lamb. The Bible tells us in Exodus, the 12th chapter, and Numbers, the 9th chapter, that preparation for Passover meant that a lamb was to be set apart an unblemished lamb and it was to be slain and it was to be roasted but one thing specifically was said about the lamb was this that it was none of the bones were to be broken now people say well uh you know th they broke his bones when he was crucified no the bible says his body was broken absolutely his body was broken beyond recognition but the bones were uh the bones were preserved. Here's why. Because we know that when Christ died upon the cross, the Bible says you know, that he gave up the ghost and the body gave up his spirit. And it was the getting time for the Sabbath. And so they couldn't leave Jesus on the cross because the Sabbath was approaching. It was getting towards dusk. And so they said, we've got to get him off the cross. They went to Herod. I mean, they went to Pilate and they said, we've got to get him off the cross. So the... Uh, Instructions were given to the Romans uh, soldiers to break the legs. Now, history tells us that these Roman soldiers were a particular group, and they were just, uh, they were psycho. <laughs> and, and 
they were trained killers who enjoyed inflicting pain on other people. They were not people that worked at a desk uh, or something like that. Their, their fulfillment in life was seeing how much torture they could put on other people. And crucifixion was their thing. They enjoyed it. Can you imagine something like that? So that when the Roman soldier, it is said that when the Roman soldier came to Jesus, seeing that Jesus was already dead, that meant that he didn't get a chance to break Jesus' legs. Therefore, it is, some have supposed that he was out of frustration, that he grabbed his spear and thrust it through the side of Jesus out of frustration and anger, knowing that he would be piercing the lungs and piercing the heart. And then the Bible immediately says this, that uh, in verse 34, it says that when he pierced him with the spear, once blood and water poured out. And doctors will tell you that that is the sign of asphyxiation. The, the lungs and, the, and around the sac around the heart fills up with fluid, therefore it poured out, showing that he had died of asphyxiation. In other words, lungs and that cavity had filled up with, with uh, water and mixed with blood. This was prophesied in Scripture. And then it says this, that in, uh, in Zechariah, the 12th chapter, verse 10, it, and it also says this in John chapter uh, 19, verse 20, uh, 37. John 19, verse 37. Scripture also says, they will look upon the one they pierced. Incredible. This was not an accident. This was not a tragedy. This was a part, miraculously, a part of all of God's work to see to it that his son, his son, Jesus said, I've got to go to Jerusalem. I have to do the work the Father sent me to go to die for the sins of all of us. I don't understand it, but it was prepared and planned before the foundations of the earth. Well, we're so thankful that you've uh, joined us on our virtual uh, Good Friday service as pastor uh, just said his body was crushed for our transgressions and um, you know when he was pierced for our iniquities and I'm so thankful for his uh, his point there and then as I think about Matt's teaching uh, that the God the Father turned away from God the Son because of the weight of the, the sins of the world were, were placed upon Jesus Christ and, and as I conclude in our service today I, I want to look at uh, one of Jesus' final statements on the cross when he says that it is finished. Um, the original uh, word there for that is tete lestai, and, and it is literally a, uh, it's a word that would be found on uh, tax documents, basically meaning paid in full. And, and Jesus Christ, uh, right before his final death, he said it is paid in full. And uh, the easiest picture that I could paint is uh, you know, many of us have mortgages, and uh, if somebody were to come and, and say, you know, give me a mortgage and stamp it, it's paid in full, could you imagine <laughs> the excitement that we would have? You know, like we would be out, I mean, just living, living a, a great life, would be very excited, um, and yet Jesus did that for our eternal life, Amen. and we just kind of go about our business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if I were to come and say, I'm going to pay your house note off, you would be forever Thankful, you would tell the people about Cliff paying your house note all probably for the rest of your life because it's just too much to, to like, I don't deserve that. Why did Cliff do that? How could he have done that? Mm -hmm. And yet, Jesus did that for, for your soul. Mm -hmm. And yet, we keep that to ourselves. Oh, no. okay. And then I think about what Matt was saying when God turned uh, his, his, his back uh, towards the sun. You know, we, we're living in this day of. Uh, COVID-19 and, and uh, hopefully a once-in-a-lifetime deal, you know, and um, I think there's a lot of fear that's rampant. People are afraid of catching the disease. They're afraid of dying from the disease. They're afraid of their family or their friends catching the disease. They're afraid of their friends and family dying, and, and then they're afraid of, well, what is this going to do for our economy? Is it going to crush our economy? What about my friend's business down the road? Is it going to kill that? And um, and here's the, the thing, you know, we, uh, if, Chuck, if you were to to get COVID-19, they're going to take you into the hospital room or any of us. It's going to be the same, and they're going to you're going to be away from family. Mm -hmm. You're going to be away from friends. We can't visit people in the hospital right now. Right. And if you die, the only people around you will be the the nurses and the, the exactly. healthcare workers. But essentially, you will feel like you're dying alone. Exactly. Exactly. 
here's here's the beautiful part of this. Even if you were to die in a hospital room, because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, you're not dying alone. Amen. Amen. The only person that truly ever died alone is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Because God turned away from him at that point. Right. But none of us will ever die alone because God is with us mm -hmm. even in that moment. And so as we think about Good Friday, I, I wish that the, the, the term for the Friday after Thanksgiving, Black Friday, wasn't taken because I, instead of a Good Friday, I think this is more of a Black Friday. I do too. I agree. It, there, there is a cloud that hangs over the darkness as you spoke about, Matthew. Uh, it, it is truly more of a Black Friday than it is a Good Friday. But we know that it's good because through Jesus' crucifixion, uh, we know that these things will come mm -hmm. upon his resurrection, and that is salvation, mm -hmm. that is the forgiveness of our sins, that is eternal life, mm -hmm. it is hope, and all of those things come about this because of this day. But it wouldn't be good, no, no nothing good, without the completion that happens in just a few short days. Mm -hmm. And so um, that is what we want to leave you with today. It is a very heavy day, but it leaves us anticipating what is to come in just a few short days. And so before we pray and dismiss, uh, we're going to uh, ask you to join and sing us in one more song. And uh, and this song, we're actually going to stop right in the middle. Um, and we're going to pick it back up Sunday morning at our sunrise service. It's going to be 7 a.m. Sunday morning. Uh, Matthew is going to be leading uh, our sunrise service. And then Pastor and Tyler are leading our, um, our Easter service at 10 o'clock that morning. So wake up early with us. Uh, it'll be live streamed. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, and so join us then. But this song here, we've sung it in church several times. Yep. We're only going to sing half of the song because right. we're singing the second half of Jesus coming out of that grave. We're going to save that for Sunday morning. Right. Mm -hmm. I cast my mind to Calvary. Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. My Savior on that cursed tree. Oh, praise the
incredible story. Thank you for the truth of it. Thank you for the change that you have brought into our lives, the four of us in this room, and then the, so many that are watching and listening and praying. Some are even weeping right now as they're participating in this service. Thank you for the power of this message. Thank you that it is a message that Satan hates, but angels in heaven rejoice to hear and that which glorifies and honors you. Now, Lord, over these next 48 hours, approximately 36 hours, uh, as we prepare for Resurrection Sunday, may our hearts be close to you and walking with you. We love you, Lord Jesus, for it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen.